the most intriguing matchup of the whole playoffs this I think this uh, week wild card matchup is going to be uh, the AFC West champion Denver Broncos versus the wild card Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, a lot of factors go into this game. Uh, when you think about the injuries that the, the Steel both teams are facing right now, Brian Dawkins for the Broncos, their emotional leader of that team. How does he play? How, is he going to be able to be available this game? Uh, for the Steelers, Rashad Mendenhall is not in. Torn ACL, he's done for the playoffs. Ben Roethlisberger, is, his ankle is really not getting any better. I'm hearing he's about 50, 60% on that ankle. And, and Markeith Pouncey, their best lineman, might be out of and might be out for this game as well. So with all being said and done, uh, the keys for the Steelers in this game are going to be that offensive line being able to keep Ben Roethlisberger upright and 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 not having Ben turn the ball over. That's going to be a really that's going to be I think the main key in this game. Uh, ben Roethlisberger he loves to extend the play if nothing's not there. Uh, that offensive line really hasn't been great as, uh, as all as all year long. That's really the weak, the one weakness of this of this the secondary for the, the for the Steelers. So I think that's going to be huge. Uh, another way, another key for them is going to be finding a way to get a running game against the Broncos. Like I said, they don't have Rashad Mendenhall. He's out for the sea. He's out for the pole the rest of the season. The playoffs torn ACL last week. Uh, you have Isaac Redman. Uh, I think John John Clay, is, I think, is active as well. And I think maybe Jonathan Dwyer is active as well. I'm not sure. But I I know John Clay is definitely probably going to be active. I think the way that they get a, they they find a way to get a running game, I think they do it through their screen game. And they'll probably go five wide. Your screen game sometimes. Maybe Heath Miller sometimes gets a tight end screen. Maybe uh, Mike Wallace gets a little tunnel screen or a bubble sc or, or a tunnel screen, basically coming back into the formation, into into the offensive line. Uh, Antonio Brown's very good screen, uh, a screen guy, and Heinz Ward, who I think is going to get a lot of a lot of bubble screen action. I think they'll they'll create they'll find a way to create um, the screen game to make it become their running game. So that's going to be key for them as well. And the third key is going to be containing Tim Tebow. Now. It, it's going to be hard because the one thing that is really good, it, it, the fact that Ryan Clark isn't playing due to health reasons of, he's not hurt, it's just he has, a, uh, I think, a blood disorder where if he plays in an altitude, it, it's really life-risking, so he's definitely not going to make the uh, play. So that's really going to help out. So the final way to contain him, James Harrison, or is it one of the inside linebackers? I thought it was going to be Troy Palomalu because he likes to make a gamble and, and and come inside and blitz at a time, but due to the fact that Ryan Clark isn't there backing him up, it's really going to be it's really going to be a, a, a really creative way how I think Coach Dick LeBeau uses that that uh that fire zone defense and containing Tim Tebow. But the players to watch out for in this game is going to be Antonio Brown, the wide receiver who's been coming out strong, who came out strong this year, uh, Heath Miller, James Harrison, and Troy Palomalu. Who, those are the four guys I think are going to be tough key players to watch out for in this game moving on to the Broncos um, the number one rushing offense in, uh, uh, in, the, in the league with Tebow Willis McGahee uh, they have number one is they're gonna have to be successful on first and second down you don't want to get the Steelers defense in third and long situations where you're gonna have to give away give to where Dick LeBeau can run any one of his any one of his creative unique zone blitzes his blitz schemes you don't want to you don't want to get in that situation so you want to be good running the football or even if it is throwing the football on first and second down you want to be in sec third and manageable situations you don't want to be in third and sixes third and sevens because then that will be a nightmare um, another key for this game is Tim Tebow has to be effective in a passing game he can't go six for 20 20 22 he he's got he's got to have to be efficient. I, he's gonna have to hit guys who are gonna be open. He has to trust his arm, uh, trust his reads out there, and he's just gonna have to be more effective in the passing game. Probably m more like how he was in the Patriots game, even though they lost. He was effective in that game passing the football, and I think special teams is gonna be huge for this team. For this team, um, they're gonna have to Eddie Royal in the punt return game, Quan Crosby in the kick return game, Matt Prater kicking the, uh, kicking the, uh, kicking the uh, field goals. Getting away just to find a way just to steal points away from the from the uh, Steelers, I would say, if they can't get to the red zone. But the players to watch out for in this game is going to be uh, 
Willis McGahee, the running back. Vaughn Miller, the, the stud outside linebacker. Elvis Dermaville and Champ Bailey. Uh, I expect those two guys, Elvis uh, Dermaville and, and Vaughn Miller, to be really, really key in this matchup when it comes to them outside rushing and trying to bring down Ben Roethlisberger. Those guys are going to be huge, and I think one of them, one of those guys, or maybe both of those guys, might have big games. Uh, the matchup to watch for in this game is going to be easily. Uh, it's going to be really exciting for me because I, seeing Mike Mike Wallace, the speeds they're being able to stretch the stretch the field for their team against Chan Bailey, who I still believe is probably a top three corner still in this league, uh, Pro Bowl guy, uh, still produced at a high level. He was one of my favorite football players. Uh, one of the best cover corners I've ever seen. It, it, it just I want to see how he does against this young guy, and that's going to be a really big key uh, matchup to watch out for in this game. Who's going to get the better of who? The one big key in this matchup is going to be explosive plays. Uh, like I said, um, Mike Wallace, he's one of the most explosive wide receivers that we have in this game. Antonio Brown, uh, Antonio Brown is another uh, a young guy who can make big plays as well. And look on the other side, you have Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow can make explosive plays with his leg and with his arm. Uh, Willis McGahee, he can break off a 20-yard a, a run sometimes, 25-yard run sometimes. Uh, uh, Demarius Thomas, the big play big play wide receiver that they got first round a couple year, last year or a, few, uh, a couple years ago, he's a guy that can make big plays. So whoever can cut down on the explosive plays, or whoever, whoever could cut down the other team having the most exposed plays, I think will win this game. With that being said and done, uh, I'm calling for the upset. Uh, I'm taking the Broncos in this game. There's just a weird feeling about this game. And the one thing, people can knock Tim Tebow all you want to. He has the one thing that is very hard to do for an NFL quarterback. And that's having your whole co your coaching staff, your coaches... And, 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 your, and your teammates trusting you in the in the in the fourth quarter, and what I've seen, they have complete trust. They don't have fake trust in Tebow. That coach speak, oh, we have trust in this guy. They have trust. If he has the ball in, in the last two minutes of the game, they can get something done. And I think this game, the, I think the Denver Broncos defense is going to be able to keep this game close enough to where Tebow probably has the ball in his hands at the end, and he either puts it in for a touchdown or they kick a field goal to win this game. I'm taking the Broncos in the upset in this game. I, I just feel like there's always that one surprise, and and I think that the 12 and two Steelers, 12 and four Steelers, lose this game due to the injuries that they had with no running game. Ryan Clark not being able to play. Pouncey maybe maybe being out of this game, and um. And and, and Rashad Mendenhall and Ben Roethlisberger not being a hunt and not not even being close to 80 percent. So. I'm taking the Broncos in this game. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you think the Steelers are going to win? Do you think the Broncos are going to win? How do you think Tebow is going to do? Ben Roethlisberger. But I'm picking an upset in this game. I got 27-24. Uh, I think it's going to be the, the score of this game. So I got 27-24 Broncos. Um, I'll let you know what you guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the games that are coming on. And I'll talk to you guys later.